and we are not alone again because it's now our thing and it's so good because we get to talk to fantastic people and there's another one here today as well and it's so exciting it's like we're going through the whole cast at this point and i'm very happy about it this time around it's our fearless git yankee warrior Devra wild hi thank you thank you for having me always very exciting when we get to talk to people who are in our favorite things which is <laughs> It's just fun. A very quick introduction and go, hello everyone, welcome to all the films we judged before. I am Katie, that is Lily Kay, and as previously mentioned, we have Deborah with us today. Love it, short and sweet. Yeah. yeah. He's a peasy lemon squeezy. All right, uh, so questions and interview and just conversation. The first question is, my favorite question is, how did you become an actor? Were you a theater child or did it come later that you want to do this? Yeah, later. I mean, I've always loved it. I've always had a passion for acting and, and singing and everything like that. And I was going to say dancing, but no, dancing is not my strong point. So I'm not even going to say that. Um, but I just, I, yeah, I came to it later because I, I come from like quite a traditional family of like doctors. Everyone's very academic. So um, acting was always seen a bit as like, um, not the particularly safe career choice so yeah so I went and did English at university first of all and then I did a master's in fashion journalism and then I went to drama school so yeah a lot wow. later than than most people um but actually I, I think it turned out for the best I had a great time at uni I made some great friends had the whole uni experience which now in hindsight I realized had I just gone straight to drama school uh I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had that and so yeah I feel quite grateful that that's actually the path that I took and now mm. I'm more mature and more like you know yeah it's been 10 years since I've been an yeah. actor since I started yeah. acting I guess professionally and um I don't know if I could have handled all that had I gone straight into it at mm. 18 yeah to be honest yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it can be a lot uh, to be fair like especially if if like you're really into it and you really want to get in and we all know that auditions are pretty hard <laughs> so yeah. I think especially <laughs> when you're when you're younger it's like it can be quite soul destroying when they say oh no yes because of this and because of that or they just don't Absolutely. even give you a reason and you're like or they don't say anything which is most most likely the case yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun times all right I love that I, I love that because so far, I think we only had like one theater kid who was like, I think it was Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Pierce, who was like, yeah, I, I knew in life pretty young that, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. And and everyone else was like, oh, yeah, I got, I got into it a bit later. But like, you know, yeah. that shows that whenever you can, you can just join in and, and just. Oh, it's never too late. It's never too late to, to go. And, you know, we, you don't even need to go to drama school or any of that. I think it's great to train. I think you should train. But now uh i think now 10 years you know 10 years ago i think drama school was the done thing and now actually i think that you can go any number of routes and certainly i think that i've learned a lot more on the jobs that i've been on than i did at drama school so in hindsight if i was to do it again would i would i go to drama school i'm not i'm not sure honestly mm. if i if i do that or if i just sort of plunge head first into into it and, and try and get jobs that way but um yeah, I I just think there's so many different routes now you can you can take and yeah. with social media being being so accessible to everyone, uh, you know, you can almost make a name for yourself there or show off your acting skills there. I mean, the, the, the possibilities really are endless. And I think that's very freeing and it's going to be very accessible to people who maybe can't afford to drums, uh, go to drama school or or don't want to go to drama school. So, mm. yeah, which I think is great. Yeah, yeah, the past looks different for everybody. There's a lot of talk about that sort of thing um, because I, I went to film school and a lot of people in the industry are like, well, there's no point in going to film school. You can just start. And it's like, that's very true. But for me, it was very much the right path. I wanted to be in a, you yeah. know, a space yeah. that was very safe, uh, that I could you know experiment and all that sort of stuff and, and, and learn what it is I actually wanted to do because I know I wanted to be close to it, but I didn't know what it was that it, it would look like for me. So yeah, yeah. it just matters it depends on the person there's nothing that can be like prescriptive for that sort of thing yeah and it gives you a structure I think as well and like a discipline that you mm -hmm. know otherwise you can be like okay well I'm going to be an actor and I'm going to start looking for auditions uh, okay well maybe I'll do it tomorrow oh nothing's happening maybe I'll just like give up then but you know if you're in a 
if you're in this a system like that like film school or drama school you're you know you're in it you sort of yeah you're there and you kind of have to do the work uh, unless you get want to get kicked out and um <laughs> you sort of have to have to get on with it so from that point of view it helps in that yeah. sense and and yeah. it helps on on auditions uh, because i can't even count on my hands how many times it happened that they didn't choose me because i didn't have a drama school behind me and i was like oh okay so because back here i'm from hungary so back here it's yeah. like it's different how they usually do it it's it's uh, it's more to do with sure drama school matters and we do have two very good ones and whatever but even if you don't have it it's it's kind of a bit easier to get in yeah. even to speaking roles as well so when i went to the uk and i started you know do all the auditions there i was like very surprised on how many yeah. times they asked me like so which drama school did you go to and i'm like saying um none <laughs> i did yeah, theater. It's, <laughs> here it's still quite um i don't know snobby in that well, sense there's quite the uh, institution is, behind it yeah <laughs> yes yeah which is kind of a shame because it again it's about uh you know it's cutting off opportunities to lots of very talented uh people mm -hmm. who again can't afford to go mm, and yeah. that's just completely unfair and uh unreasonable and that's why you know inevitably you see the same names in film and tv and the same people are all over over and over again and there's just not that many opportunities for other people because yeah i i completely agree with you and even 10 years later I still think there is that idea of which drama school have you gone to yeah. and or, you know, unless you've been lucky enough to say land a massive uh, yeah. role in a big TV show or something that, people, you know, then people probably won't look at which drama school you've been to. But for most people, that's where they have to start. And mm -hmm. uh, that's really kind of all agents are interested in, which is uh, which is a shame. It is. It is. For but, sure. uh, you know, if you want to be an extra and die in everything, <laughs> just ask me. <laughs> I'm an expert <laughs> in that. It's easy to get into that part, but easier mm -hmm. at least. The next question is, and uh, before we go into the Baldur's Gate uh, territory, you just made a very good announcement and I, I love that game, so I'm very excited to hear about it, if you can already talk about it, is that you're in the Cyberpunk DLC. Yes, I am. <laughs> so happy. Uh, I didn't play it yet. I didn't play it yet. I don't mind spoilers, but I'm I'm, I'm going to play it. Like, come on. It has you, Idris Elba, so many great <laughs> names. I'm like... <sighs> <laughs> Me and Idris, my good old pal Idris. No, I'm <laughs> um, I just love how that tripped off the tongue. It's got you, it's got Idris Elba. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah. Are you a fan? Are you a cyberpunk fan then? I do like it. It was very weird at first that, you know, you make your character and then you don't see your own face. And I was like, very weird without right. buying. I was like, ooh, this is that. But then that's Keanu Reeves. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm sold. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to play with the DLC. But what can you tell us about your role in, in this new addition to the game? Um, well, I can tell you, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'll let you, I'll let you get there and, and play it yourself. But she is, um, uh, an Eastern European uh, Russian character okay. and she's very badass uh, not unlike Lazelle from Baldur's Gate 3 um, <laughs> very intense uh, she's got quite an emotionally charged story and when you meet her she's looking for her brother so okay. I think it's up to you whether you can help with that or not but mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's what I'm going to say without without spoiling it too much but it was it was great and hilariously, it was another one of those projects that I didn't know that it was cyberpunk until I recorded it. So <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. Okay. So a, a game that, yeah, uh, a game that I'd, ha you know, I'd heard of um, I have a few friends that, that are really into games and I knew they really uh, enjoyed cyberpunk. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, that's, that's very cool. There you go. <laughs> but I didn't know at the time. <laughs> uh, did you have to do like uh, mocap more more recordings as well? Or was it just? No just voice okay. just voice just for that voice. one yeah i don't know in that game whether they did mocap or whether maybe just the the uh core cast did mocap i i actually don't mm. know about that i'm not sure either to be honest i didn't mm. watch any behind the scenes which is like bad lily but like i, feel like <laughs> I, I, I did but like i i, I, I like don't don't did, yes. <laughs> don't don't quote me on that yeah just... we'll have to look that one up because i'm not sure myself 
capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. How did you find uh, that character's voice? Like, do, do you have a Russian accent in it then? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, so, well, I'm Bulgarian originally. So uh, Eastern European, uh, Bulgarian, Russian accents are in my wheelhouse anyway. Um, but I think for this character... Um, it, it was just very, she's just in like high intensity mode all the time. It's, uh, it's a very, it's a very different vibe to Lazelle, who I think can go, can go into those moments, but can also sort of mm -hmm. threaten you very subtly. I think with uh, Nika, who is the character in, in Cyberpunk that I play, she, I mean, you, you meet her for a very short time anyway, but she, when you meet her, it's all systems go. There's no like mm -hmm. easing off the off the pedal I don't know do you know what? I never know how I get to these voices I sort of I read the character description and I I try a few things out and then I mm -hmm. basically just go for what feels right I I honestly don't overthink my auditions and I think that that's uh, a big part of the reason why video games uh, have been so successful for me because I don't overthink it mm -hmm. I I do overthink my on-screen auditions and for that reason they always it's always a shit show um I don't know why I, I get I I don't know why I guess just having the voice for me makes it a lot easier and more relaxed whereas yeah. when I'm thinking about the camera and everything it's I get a bit like oh God, like in my head and then watching it back and I'm like oh this part of my face moved and this did this and I don't like it but with video games and just the voice I can I can be quite relaxed about it and, and I don't mind experimenting mm -hmm. with different things and with Nika I guess they they liked my take and yeah and it just sort of worked out but she's uh the, the voice I'd say is just a bit um higher I suppose than Lazelle's and yeah just very intense all the time because <laughs> that's the that's the kind of character she is she's come from this very intense environment as well so I suppose it sort of makes sense yeah yeah I could like I'm very bad at accents like just awful but uh funnily enough russian is a very funny one for me because in hungarian when i when i speak my mother tongue i can do it easily like this but when yeah. i'm speaking english and then i would have to drop a russian accent on top of it i can't do it <laughs> then i don't know why my brain is like no one you can't do steps. it with, yeah <laughs> they just yeah. too many things to put together well that's 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 tricky i yeah i'm thinking now if i could speak bulgarian in a different accent and I don't know that I could actually come to think of it I don't know it is a, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mind fuck it is yeah it truly is yeah <laughs> it's like oh wait why why is my brain not working oh well uh, it is yeah it is. but there's some <laughs> accents I think that you naturally that just naturally come easier to some people and some that just don't mm. um like some and even when I'm doing accents sometimes my mouth will just refuse to say certain words so that's fun when you're yeah, doing there's, that and there's something about the way that um we get used to like sounds uh in our mouths basically because like yeah. I've been like learning Spanish for like three years on Duolingo I still can't like get my mouth around a lot of the sounds and I think it just comes from like like where you kind of where certain things sit in your mouth and yeah, sort of I agree. I agree yeah. totally. And you get used to certain. Uh, yeah, you get used to where your where your tongue sits or where yeah. where you're you're forming certain uh, you know vowels or consonants. And then mm -hmm. if you have to change that, it's quite difficult, especially if you're not practicing it. Yeah. 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 Practice is very important uh, with big <laughs> yes. languages, hundred uh, percent. All right, so let's jump into Baldur's Gate then. Yeah, uh, because it's like I'm. I'm Katie is currently at Act Three. Mm -hmm. I finished the wow. game and I restarted it because I realized how many I played for like 82 hours and even when I was finished I realized how many things I missed out on so I yeah, was like yeah I've heard that I am I've heard that getting close to about 100 hours and I'm it's only in a yeah, and that shows how much crazy. I missed because she's at 100 hours and I finished at 82 so I was like oh shit <laughs> so I went back but that's and the, already that's the beauty you can go yeah. back you can go back and do it again Hundred percent. I I and let's 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 get to Lazel, who's I think one of the greatest characters ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> to be honest, like, but I I told uh, Samantha as well that the whole cast is just 
fucking brilliant in this game. Yeah. I, I just can't get enough. Uh, and I think the last time uh, I had this feeling was with Mass Effect, which, you know, it's, it's my all-time favorite game easily. Baldur's Gate is coming in very hard on that and being like, mm. hey, I'm here. And I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm playing you again. Yeah. again. Uh, so, Lazel, a get young key uh, warrior, uh, how did you find her voice? Because it's a very unique voice. Yeah. Yes, it is. And again, I can't say that it was particularly a conscious choice. I think it was... Mm -hmm. um, trial and error and mm -hmm. also uh, the result of doing this character for, for many years for four years and I think uh, and especially I think if you watch uh, some of the earlier stuff uh, the early access stuff and act one you'll, you'll find that her voice is slightly higher and then as the game goes on it really starts to sit into that natural lazily place because uh, mm -hmm. honestly I was sort of finding the character as as I was going along I mean I think I had a grasp of her personality pretty quickly but mm -hmm. in terms of her voice and her movement, that took a little bit longer to settle. Um, so, yeah, it just sort of naturally, I, I don't have an explanation for it, honestly. It just naturally <laughs> started to kind of uh, sit in that really lower, raspier place. And and I think we all realized that really suited her and it really suited her movements and her alien alienness. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really how it happened. Yeah. I don't have a very technical process for this at all. As you can, as you can see, I feel like I'm, I've been sort of winging it in the video game space uh, because I've just been very lucky, and I'm not, yeah, and I just don't overthink too much. Which, uh, yeah, it clearly is working. That's very much yeah. the way it goes. Playing a character for a long time, playing D and D as well, you just sort of find uh, a rhythm with them after That's a true. while. Yeah. Um, absolutely yeah. and and also because we were discovering more and more about the character as the game went on we we didn't have the whole story at the beginning mm -hmm. um so at the beginning when we did early access all I knew was early access stuff and and that was that I really didn't know what was going to happen at the end or how things could go so uh I was finding out elements of the story kind of as they were being written and and I I loved that I love that because it made me incredibly present with the character and then it meant that I could really play the moments rather than knowing oh okay so at the end Lazelle's going to do this and this and that's how she, that's right. one option how she can end up so now in this section I'm going to make her be a bit more like jaded because I already know this and that's a you can really like screw yourself doing that yeah uh, so I think the performance is actually more authentic because I genuinely didn't know what mm. was happening <laughs> um until I'd sort of get the script uh for that particular session and then obviously I'd look at it and and also we were jumping around so much mm. um so honestly that was a, a a gift I think some people might say like oh that's was it tricky to do that or mm. maybe it was challenging but I didn't find that I actually found that to be quite refreshing and quite exciting and and not often do you get to do something like that as an actor so yeah. mm. I thought it was great yeah the whole process really does sound like playing a game of D&D &D, which yeah. is very fun <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. And now that I play D and D, I can actually say that. I was going to say, did you I have agree. a good time? <laughs> life threatening situation. It certainly does. And I don't know why you're taking so long. So while you're kind of like speaking <laughs> to these guys, <laughs> this is not easy. <laughs> it should be for a wizard. Yes, a very good time. I can. I especially enjoyed the role playing part of it. Being an actor, that was just absolute fun times. Yeah, and being able to literally act opposite my my Baldur's Gate castmates. I mean, what a treat! Yeah, yeah. what a treat what a that treat. was. Yeah, what, what, what fun it was for us to watch it all unfold. Oh, good. <laughs> just I'm the glad. chaos. <laughs> it was ma yeah, it was massive chaos because most of us hadn't played, mm. so most of us were just like, "Can I just?" do this and I yes. think what, what I certainly discovered yeah from D&D is basically the answer is yes yes and you just need to get into that mindset of like you can literally do anything you just need to think outside the box yeah so yeah yeah I, good I, I it's it's literally my first time playing D&D was with uh Katie and our little crew and uh <laughs> I just remember being like I had the, the, my only knowledge about it was like I knew it existed mm. and I was very aware because obviously uh, in my school days people were playing it but I I never really got into it 
Yeah, basically because I was an outsider for everything, but oh well. Uh, so when I first came in, it was like, oh, so I can be anything, and I'm going to be an idiot like I always am. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and I just rolled it in, and it felt fun to just yeah. be very silly and just you know do whatever I want and just enjoy it. I think Katie can just be like, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you got to, I have to admire the way that you kind of went balls to the walls like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one who was touching everything. Yeah. Like I was literally, oh, what's this? <laughs> Just that's that's touching. what you have to do, apparently. That's what you have to do. And that's where you it find is. like the secret things and the objects and all of this stuff. So yeah, and why not? And what the hell? Yeah. I just went for it. And I did I die, Katie? I don't think I died for it. I've never no, I didn't think any of us died. I, I got I got stabbed once because I was like, I'm just gonna take I was a changeling, so I was like, you know, I'm just gonna take someone's form and just walk into this place. And I walked in and obviously I was discovered because I was very bad at deception. And then I got stabbed and I was like, Oh, oh. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's it's intense. And also it seems like so much of it is down to the dungeon master. Oh, yeah. So, which is which is great. I love having a person like that that you know basically sort of narrates the whole thing and guides you through the adventure. That's very, it's very cool. It's, mm. it's but it's it's long. I mean, I've heard people play these campaigns sometimes for like months and yes. stuff. So mm. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with people that can that can do that. You know, the whole Zoom thing just made it a lot easier. Yeah. Because I, I think if it would still be a thing where you have to gather in someone's place or go to somewhere to, to do it, I, I think a lot less people would, would play it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it definitely helps technology. Definitely yeah. Helps. There is <laughs> yes. nothing quite like being at an actual table with a bunch of other people, That's though. True. I, I imagine. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best way to to experience it. All right, back back to laser, back to laser because I I want to know everything about laser. <laughs> uh, uh, my uh, it's it's like uh, obviously you live with this character for four years, uh, mm -hmm. so you're quite intimate with laser. You know a lot about her. So she I says, have to yeah. ask, <laughs> uh, what do you think if if this whole game would play in the modern world and uh, you know all these characters were in this universe what would be laser's favorite movie right now uh, luckily uh, we've i've already discussed this with somebody else and i've got <gasps> oh. this down i've got this okay. down okay? okay are you ready right yes. so actually well actually no we didn't talk about her favorite movie we talked about movies that i would um i would show her mm. okay so but now I'm thinking, what would be her favorite movie? So, mm -hmm. okay, the movies that I said I would show her were um, 300. Yes, that makes sense. And yeah, totally. And uh, Gladiator, though mm -hmm. I think we'd have to start with 300 to sort of get the, you know, the bloodlust out of the way. Mm -hmm. Then yep. Gladiator, a little bit of an emotional journey in there. And then I said I would end with a classic Titanic. Um, you oh, know, to see. I love this. <laughs> Well, I think she she might potentially enjoy it. I think she'd have a lot to say about certain events of, the, <laughs> of that movie, but she would enjoy it. But what would be her favorite film? And mm -hmm. I don't know why this suddenly sprung to mind, but what about Jaws? Yeah. Too much? No, I, I think know. that's great. Yeah. Jaws or like a, a classic like black and white Hitchhock, uh, Hitchhock, <laughs> Hitchhock. <laughs> <laughs> or a Hitchhock. Yeah. <laughs> also, either one, like no, a, like um a psycho or mm. a you know one of those like old old films. Yeah. Mm. I can imagine her watching Jaws and being on the side of the shark. I think yes. that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, completely, completely. Or... Like, why are you all hating on the shark? The shark just wants to eat. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, I love that. Sorry, my headphone came out. But yeah, mm. yeah. I I can imagine her being on the side of the shark, and and why not? Yeah. The shark also. It deserves to be defended. Mm -hmm. Damn right. So true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good <laughs> one. I like that. Jaws. Yeah. Laser loves Jaws. Makes sense. <laughs> that's sense. canon. <laughs> <laughs> and if she wants to go for something crazier, but still shark related, she can just watch the Meg. And that's oh, now it. that's a, that's a, yeah, that, I think she would enjoy that. I think, I think she'd enjoy going to uh, a cinema and putting on the 3D glasses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That I would be really, all your She'd love it. She would love it because she'd be in the action. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. She would just kill people around her. 
yeah, just probably. getting too much into it. Just like, probably, yeah. <laughs> love that, love that, Katie. Let's let's. All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what you're watching at the moment. Are you watching anything interesting? Oh, Katie, Katie, Katie. <laughs> what can I say? I just thought I had this thought the other day of like how. I haven't watched anything in months because Aww. I had a baby and I have no time. And when I, thank you, <laughs> when I do have time, my instant go-to is let's, let me just go to sleep. So I understand that one tragic. entirely. <laughs> yeah, it's quite tragic that I haven't watched anything, but I'll tell you what I did watch the other day. It was my first time on Netflix for a long time. And I started watching the latest season of Sex Education. Yes, I love it. So funny. I we just it. actually released a, a little bonus episode because we, yeah. we did a little review on, of our own. And yeah, I love Sex Education. We were just they talking about yeah. how um, absolutely exceptional Shooty Gabba is for that season. Um, uh, as Eric, we, we were just like singing yes. his praises because he's, um, yeah. I think he really does a standout performance that. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I think the whole cast is so brilliant and so funny. And uh, I love Gillian Anderson. Um, just, yeah. Because then I was I was watching The Crown before that. Uh, and it's just such a contrast. Um, You've got but... range. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Shocking. Gillian Anderson. Shocking. <laughs> uh, it's got range. Um, yeah, I, I love that. So I'm currently uh, going to... Well, I've watched the first episode and I'm going to try and get through it. It might take me all year, but I, I will do it. Uh, depends on how much I want to prioritize my sleep. Um, but yeah, that's that's really what I've been what I've been watching. Yeah. yeah no, but that's, that's a good, good choice to watch. It is a very good choice. It's good, yeah. Yeah. Is What's it, your you... favorite character from Sex Education? Oh, my favorite. I know it's a hard one. Oh, that's a hard one. Probably good old Gillian Anderson. You love Jean. Fair. Jean. Yeah. I forgot her name, but Jean. <laughs> Jean. We forgot names all the time. So yeah, it's the, the, <laughs> honestly, I think there's a significant portion of our podcast where we're sitting there like, what's that person's name again? Hold what on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, because now in this season, she has a, a tiny baby and I can so relate to uh, that first episode where she's just like frazzled and forgets yeah. like why she's opened the fridge and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I mm. totally understand <laughs> do you have any like comfort movies that you tend to go back to or sort of things that are you like do, do you tend to watch uh when you have time and are not looking after a tiny baby <laughs> well i do look i i always like the classic love actually when it gets Excellent to christmas choice. time you've got yeah you've got to crack a crack open their love actually bit of home alone in there i get i realize mm-hmm. they're all related to christmas hey um, i love christmas I love movies that. Yeah, <laughs> Christmas movies. Yeah, so good. Um, even though lately, uh, you know, with all the streaming services, to be honest, I've been more into TV shows. Uh, and I'm trying to my favorite just... as well. So I'm <laughs> yes, yeah, what kind of TV? Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I've loved watching in the past, like um, Ozark, and <sighs> you love Ozark. Uh, well, you got your classic Breaking Bad, of course. Yes, yes. always. Good. Always. Um, yeah, can't think of any others that are my favorite, but I do have a lot. But my comfort movies tend to be those, yeah, the Christmas ones. Christmas movies, yeah, yeah. that's fair enough. Sure. So, yeah. if it is Christmas movies, do you like musicals as well? I like, me, yeah, I do. I prefer watching them, like going to the theatre, say, and watching just, it live rather than watching it in um... a, a, yeah, watching it on a in a film. Actually, in the summer, I did watch Sing for the first time. Mm. Nice. Um, I love I love like animated stuff as well. Yeah. So, for example, like Despicable, Despicable Me is yes. just one of my <laughs> like top top favorites, and Up as well. Oh, oh, oh Up is so beautiful. Yeah, it makes me shed a tear because I have yeah. a good, a very good recommendation for you. If you oh, haven't go on. seen it yet, uh, it's an Apple TV. Uh, it has Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell, Octavia Spencer, who's my beloved, freaking love Octavia Spencer. It's a musical. And it's a oh. Christmas movie. It's oh. a spin on Dickens's uh, Christmas Carol. It's called Spirited. And it has the fucking greatest Christmas songs in it. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and they Ryan, all sing? They all sing. And they, it's, it's Ryan Reynolds' voice is like so freaking good. I was like, oh, this man can do everything. So many, 
so many actors are like that though aren't they they like sort of keep it quite like a-list celebrities they're just like oh yeah actor actors and then they put them in the musical and suddenly yeah. they're like what you're just like wow where did that <laughs> yep. voice come from yeah so many of them are like that oh, but I will check it out that sounds like a perfect highly. fusion of everything that I like mm. oh 100% I, I, I cried on it which is in my case is not surprising because I cry on everything like literally uh but but like it was it was those genuine tears when you're really into a story and yeah, really into characters yeah. and and Octavia Spencer has the most beautiful song in it and and she said in an interview that she was mortified of singing but she fucking nails it it's it's I just bet. I bet. Perfect. I will watch it because I have these movies. I'm sure you know it. It, it, it is relatable uh, to have the kind of movies that you're just always going to watch at a certain time of the year. Yeah, yeah. It's on that list now. <laughs> totally, totally. So one to add to my Christmas uh, 2023 list. Yes. Yeah, it's a good family fun as well. So you know. Oh, Even good. the little one is is gonna enjoy yeah, it. Or just baby might enjoy it. Sleep on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good ride. It's a good ride. All right. Uh, you mentioned the uh, TV shows. Is there a favorite one other than the previously oh, I mentioned? Can't Breaking? pick just one. <laughs> you I can't pick, two. pick just one. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to think now of ones that like you know. I lo- oh, actually, what I did watch a few months ago, Black Mirror. Good choice. Love. Yeah. Love, love, love. Um, years and years. Oh, I still haven't gotten around to that. And I love oh, Russell T. Davis. So good. <laughs> that's that's like stun that's yeah, that's stunning, stunning, stunning. Mm. It's one of those like lightning in a bottle TV shows, I think, that's just uh captured something very, very special. Um mm. so yeah, there's oh, there's a few on the like the tip of my head somewhere like milling around that we're going to finish this and I'm going to be like I've just remembered my favorite ones <laughs> but those ones certainly are in there those certainly yeah. are in there um there was also uh, uh, um that Michaela Cole uh which uh, what was it called? oh is that the um, um um the shit no I know exactly what you I mean I may destroy yeah. you I may destroy that, you That's I may destroy it. you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I may destroy you very, very good. And also like classic flea bag. Everyone loves oh, flea bag. Yes. But, oh, flea yeah. bag I have good. the um the the scriptures, uh, proper like yes. with the pink, pink edges and everything. I um I actually got the chance to see that uh, during her last time like performing it. Um wow. in the West how was it then seeing it live? Oh, it was I mean it was incredible. I, I also was very lucky because like the theatre was full, but like the two people because we I managed to get us like seats from like the second row, but the two people who were sitting like right in front of my myself and my mother didn't turn up so I had this like perfect <laughs> oh, view <laughs> perfect. Like, which does it just never happens to me because I'm that quite never short. happens no <laughs> so 90% of the time I go to the theater and somebody who is just like six foot something sits in front of me and yeah. I have to spend the entire thing going yeah that happens most of the time I would say which is annoying yeah, but yeah, and also to for people to not turn up to that particular show, you are very lucky. So surprised, I was like, I mean, I'm I'm counting my blessings, but like, why are you not here? <laughs> yeah, sort of thing. Oh, but yeah, God. no, she was incredible, and it was it was it was it was it was such a brilliant um evening. Um, yeah, she's she's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's just unapologetic, and I and she doesn't really give a, a shit about about you know following a certain process or a certain narrative. And I love that she. Yeah, she just embraced being who she is and this is what she likes to do and this is how she likes mm. to write and this is her style and she's now a massive success because of it. And I think like fair enough, because she completely um she completely created something brand new that we haven't really seen on TV and luckily everybody's seen how brilliant mm. she is. Mm. Yeah. It was such a, a, a um, I don't really know what the word I'm looking for is, but um it's because that first series was such a perfect like lightning in a bottle thing. Uh, when they announced that we're making a second one, I think a lot of people were just sort of like, but why? You finished the story so perfectly and all this yeah. stuff. And then she gave us an even, I personally find, even better second series that wraps things up even more perfectly. Yeah. And I was like, I don't actually understand how you managed to do that, but I'm so impressed. Very talented. And also, and then, you know, obviously she stopped when I guess people were almost wanting more, but then she knew that, you don't want to mm. over overdo yeah. it with that kind of stuff you've done the you know you've done a great 
piece of work or two seasons absolutely perfect I mean she probably could have done a lot more but probably, actually yeah, stopping yeah. it right then is, is perfect because then it sometimes you can just uh ruin it I suppose if you if you do too oh, many yeah. seasons and then it just kind of waters down the quality but not that I I think she would have done that to be honest I think she would we would have had more genius yeah. moments but <laughs> yeah that's what we're always hoping for at least to, to, to yeah. just you know it's, it's just instead of going downhill which unfortunately it tends to happen with a lot of them it, it sometimes happens yes yeah when yeah. you've got like 27 seasons Ugh, or something God. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i had to tap out from a few series i was like oh no you're yes just, you're just going way likewise, too far with this likewise yeah. it happens but uh um oh i had I hey, what? A question in my head. I'm going to jump in because yes, your, your go, discussion go. about um uh, uh you know crying at, at spirited got me wondering are you as somebody who gets like particularly emotional watching stuff or or um is Ooh. it quite difficult to to get like a big emotional reaction out of you? Um, I I don't. Uh, <laughs> you will get a, an emotional reaction out of me, but it won't be like buckets of tears. It will right. just be like a yeah. single, a single little one that just trickles down one. here. That will be it. Yeah. But I might be crying inside, maybe. <laughs> so the the opening to up is not one that's going to get you in buckets. <laughs> oh no, that got, that, that got well. me. That that. Got I mean, me. yeah, yeah. That gets everyone. Yeah. Let's be fair. Like... That's a that's a just a yeah. That's that's a one that's a that's a tearjerker. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> for 100%. sure. 100%. Is there is there one that like you go to? when you need like a like a proper like catharsis or is that just not the sort of thing that you kind of go for um oh you know I always go back to friends with you know if I feel like watching something just light-hearted and and funny and it, that's like a, I think a, a comfort one not so much a cathartic one but like a comfort one that no, I say if I'm like having my lunch and I've got you know 20 minutes and I just love it I can watch those episodes over and over I'll never get bored 100%. of them ever I think so, for I think a lot of us my go-to. who like grew up in the UK as well, because it's just it was just always on. It became it became yeah. so much like a comfort thing for a lot of people. I know it, it did well. for me. Yeah, yeah. I I yeah. love Friends. Like, hmm, what's your favorite Friends episode? That's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's hot. Oh, you can't put me on the spot like that. There, so <laughs> so many good ones. My favorite one is when Joy and Ross accidentally sleep together on the sofa and then they want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then they are like, I, I'm, I'm just going to go upstairs <laughs> and lay down on the sofa for a nap. And I'm like, mm, brilliant. Because it's it's honestly, the, it's the tiny moments in there. I, I always say this, it's it's in every series, movie, whatever it is, it's usually the tiny moments that, that capture me and, and keep me there and being like, you got it. Because it's like, you know, even in a, in a sci-fi or a fantasy, they manage to put in uh, these very relatable things from time to time. And that's when I'm like, yes, that's my Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the acting, I love things where it doesn't feel. And and look, to be honest, with most things that you see these days on film and TV, it doesn't it doesn't feel like they're acting. But things where you genuinely forget that these are actors, mm. um, and I think that's that's really a mark of an actor at the top of their game when you just really believe that they are the character rather than an actor playing mm. a character. So so yeah, I think that's really good thing and and just movies in general and everything in general is, is that yeah is related to this it's just always amazes me like you know I just like even when I because I had a little bit of a film fatigue let's go with that uh this year but uh even then I I managed to find some like gems that were like yeah this is great it's still great you know what I I, what I did watch over this and now that I've said I haven't watched anything I'm thinking of like a million things that I did watch over the last few months but yes. I didn't right so I haven't seen Barbie yet which I'm okay. very sad about but I will see Barbie somehow I don't know how I can see it now I don't know if it's in cinemas but I did watch yeah. um, Oppenheimer and I really liked it yeah. I really liked so it I thought I was going to be bored not going to lie <laughs> but Same. I was captivated loved it can this, Barbie live up? <laughs> I I'm such a fan of um honestly we'll go to movies where people get into rooms and talk to each other over like a lot of other stuff because I love 
character work more than anything else I think um I think yeah. it, that's that really is like the most important thing for me and I've said it multiple I, I, I say it to a lot of people I, my favorite things are the stuff where I watch it and I'm like it's just so transported that I'm sitting there like this is magic what you guys yeah. make is magic <laughs> this is real yeah. magic I don't understand <laughs> and I think I've spent I, so much time like trying to figure out how it all works because I'm like but it it's it's magic <laughs> it's how does how is this happening I know I'm trying to look I feel like the that all the time all the time and every time I have like a crisis of acting or like what mm. uh, why am I like why am I still doing this I'm not getting where I want to be I'm not getting this audition whatever then uh, if you watch something like that it feels it fills you just with such um hope and optimism and you just like reminded why why you want to keep going mm-hmm. I think as an artist yeah for sure all right uh just to uh sideway back to to Baldur's Gate again because I have question still that needs answering um so obviously dear viewers uh spoilers if you haven't played Baldur's Gate uh three just yet um I I got an ending with with Lazel that I didn't really <laughs> I was like oh shit I messed it up because I had a very high approval she's very into me from the beginning and I was like oh okay <laughs> let's rock and roll but I didn't do Katie, I don't know, cover your ears or something. <laughs> go for it, okay. Okay, I, I, I didn't go and free Orpheus. Oh. Right. Because I, I read that, I, I tend to do this, but I, I had to read up like what happens if we, if we free him because I obviously didn't want anyone to change into a freaking mind flayer. Uh, and then I, everyone was is like, Is this yeah. massive spoilers for Katie now? Yeah, it it's is. It's okay. To be honest, I will probably end up looking this up anyway. So you, you, you are all free to, to please please continue. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm curious anyway. But then at the end, once you like, you know, defeated the other brain and, and whatnot, Lisa was really angry with me. I was so angry. And, and you know, I tried the persuasion thing that, you know, you, we should stay together and, and you know, still stick together and she was like no I'm like oh no I because I I am I am a people pleaser so I try to be like getting the happy ending for everyone mm-hmm. so when she left I was like oh you fuck can't please everyone in Boulder's <laughs> Gate you can't you can't and honestly I can't even tell you why she was annoyed at you <laughs> I'm just uh st- dabbling into starting to play the game myself so I will let you know if I get the happy ending with uh, <laughs> okay, Lizelle, please. I don't know if I'll manage, honestly. God, I was so annoyed because I, if you can only go back to the beginning of the fight, so you have to do the fight all over again, right? If, if yeah, you want to yeah, try yeah. it again, and I was like, oh shit, do I do I do it again or do I start like a whole new playthrough and and try something different? Well, that's a lot if you're near the end, isn't it? That's a lot. Yeah. It's it's like so many endings, and I know that you know there are cases where she stays and it's all good but like how do you do that so I'm like I'm I'm sure you you recorded like what like six or seven or I don't even know how many different endings. loads yeah loads. loads of different endings and yeah again it was uh we were sort of jumping around all over the shop uh sometimes we'd go back to certain things we record them uh but yeah yeah there's uh, you know I like that this is a game where the player has so much agency mm-hmm. and where you end up just depends on your on your choices and I guess that there's so many situations where you get to the end and you're like oh had I done this and this maybe this would be different but then you can go back to the beginning and start again like I'm just again my mind is just blown that this is a game that you because I always saw games as sort of linear you buy a game you start mm-hmm. it and you finish it and that's it mm-hmm. but this is a game that just goes on and on and on you can play it like a million different ways I guess well not a million but I know a lot of different ways I know so many people who are going through like third playthroughs with like an entirely different person because they wanted to see like yeah um you know what it would look like if they were a bard or if they did this sort of thing or if they did like full like evil <laughs> you know <laughs> little, 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 little bits and pieces exactly. like that it, it is so impressive just how much is built in oh they Absolutely. thought about 
I think almost everything because people are. I love TikTok. I love your TikToks, by the way. I'm, oh, I'm, thank you. Every time I you pop up on my for you page, I'm like, yeah, this is brilliant. <laughs> Just <laughs> thank you. Amazing. But I love because obviously algorithms and everything, and TikTok realized that I love Baldur's Great Gate. Yeah. Me. Uh, so I keep having these short videos pop up that say like I can't believe they thought of this and that and they just come up with these most ridiculous things like I don't know there was this guy who collected all the um, uh, barrels put it in the goblin camp and then just shot a fire arrow on it and just exploded the whole thing and killed every leader that you have to kill there with, with those barrels and that's it but it was like 150 barrels in, or something and oh, the wow. game was like, yeah, you did it. Well done. And there was even a dialogue for it. Like, oh, that was a good idea or something like that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, how how did they figure out that someone would go around that to yeah, that? yeah, there's people <laughs> who really think outside the box. And I fear that I am not one of those people. So I'm going to have a real struggle um, playing this game. Oh, so honestly, we'll, we'll see. I think I get too stuck in like the sort of thinking about like the video game mechanics of the thing that I don't exactly. think outside of the box exactly. there have been a number yeah. of things where I'm like I'm stuck I can't do anything and I'll do a little google and they're just like well, why don't you just try this and I'm like yeah oh, and I you're can, like oh. I can do that <laughs> yes yeah D D. welcome welcome to the world of D. anything yeah. is possible that should be the slogan yeah anything is possible so true. 100%. Um, I asked this from Samantha and I, I'm very interested to hear what you think. Uh, was that like, because I know that, you know, obviously you did mocap recordings and uh, all that for this game, but was there a day where everyone just, yeah, I don't know, had a bad day and, and you just all messed around and just left throughout the whole day? Or is there a funny memory that you can share with us from from the set? Um, oh, uh, I mean, I think there was lots of moments of uh, messing things up, starting again, mispronouncing words, um, dancing around inside the studio while everybody's watching you from behind the pane of glass, because that's how <laughs> the setup is. Uh, I like to do that a lot. Um, yeah, I can't even pinpoint one single thing. It was a lot of silliness all the time, which I'm so up for, as you know. Yeah. I'm up for the silliness. So yeah, I need to like think back on all these moments, but I can't pick one because every day was just masses of fun. I can't uh, even, yeah, there, there wasn't a single like bad day or something like that. It was all really, really just, just great. It doesn't feel like work at all. I love, I love that. And yeah. everyone keeps praising it like, you know, best time ever. And we're just sitting here with Katie, like, oh yeah, this is how you can do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> learn <laughs> people oh, it was a good time it was a great time uh, it was a great time it was the greatest of times yeah I get nostalgic about it now it's over yeah is it over though well it's it's over for now I, who knows what's going to happen in uh, in some time who knows I, I genuinely don't know I need to be told yeah. as well hopefully yeah. we, you never know I think I mean, it blew just, up really well like yeah it's done really well and I think that now it's fair enough for everyone and, and you know actors and, and Larian and Pitstop Productions and everyone to just enjoy the hard work mm. that they've put in and yeah. then if something comes of it later then great but yeah let's enjoy it yeah <laughs> we've worked anyway. so hard for it yeah oh, 100%. but it's it's and it's so big like you know you can't get tired of it really so that's yeah it's incredibly incredibly replayable which is very hard to achieve i think with games yeah definitely uh, but in this case i'm like because when i first played it i was like ah oh, this is the part i'm you know not gonna look forward to to play again and now i'm at that part with my second playthrough and i actually really like it and i'm like exactly oh yeah nice i like that okay yeah uh, let's rock and roll with that uh i gotta ask about uh you know because obviously lazel is a git yankee uh, yeah, and and there are these wonderful Git Yankee words which I won't even attempt to try and pronounce and, <laughs> and do. But you you're like the master of of uh. of it all, and and you know I I'm interested to hear like what was the process like on that because we hear in a lot of cases like for example with Avatar where they had to learn the Navi language. Uh, did you have like a separate like study session to learn these words or or how how did they do this? 
Um, no, no, I didn't have to uh, because I just had so much help uh, and support on the day whenever I had to do those uh, lines or say those words. Uh, the directors uh, had a glossary of mm -hmm. the of all the meanings, so I knew what I was saying, and then everything was written out phonetically for me as well. So okay. at the beginning, it was kind of a bit of a of a mind fuck to get your mouth around it. We we're talking about accents earlier, so yeah. that was certainly you know tricky. Um, and and to slip it sort of naturally into sentences because yeah. Lazel does that a lot mm -hmm. uh, without making it sound like I am trying to pronounce a Githyan key word. Uh, and then by the end, obviously with having four years experience of it, you you know it it comes yeah. natural. It comes more naturally to me now than it did before. Uh, but no, I didn't have like a separate Githyan key mm. course that I have to go through. Though that would have been a lot of fun. I would have oh, enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I find constructed language is so fascinating. The way that people oh, can yeah. come up with like. Just like it's, th this, this doesn't exist, but it technically like functions well enough. <laughs> it does, yeah, yeah, and it's such a mimic of all her, um, all her personality traits uh, and her abrasiveness and her sort of directness and her warrior-like nature are all really brilliantly re re reflected in the language that mm -hmm. she uses and the sounds that the language makes, mm -hmm. which I think is is an incredible feat to, uh, to yeah, to to whoever sort of came up with it. Agreed. Did you did you find yourself at any point in time just slipping it into your <laughs> everyday talk by accident? Um, <laughs> no, no, I haven't come that far yet. But uh, but but <laughs> the classic chk is something that uh, I feel. I was going to ask because she yeah. does it to me every time. I'm like, please stay at the camp, and then she... <laughs> <laughs> she's like. Chk. <laughs> yeah no oh, I, I haven't been doing that yet but uh but you know it's it's not too late to start slipping that into into uh everyday language yeah i think yeah. we could start a trend yeah oh my god just try it with a random person who doesn't know anything about your role <laughs> in the game <laughs> or this language just da -da -da -da, and then just a word and exactly just look at the confusion on their face. I love that. Yeah. Right. So before we let you go, uh, here's a little secret. We are actually going to meet in person at the end of October at MCM. Oh, MCM. Uh, MCM. Yay. Rock and yes. roll. When I saw that you guys are all coming, I was like, you have to go. <laughs> I'm always there because, uh, and this is what you're going to see now. I'm I'm somewhat of an artist or something. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, <laughs> or something. No, no. You are an artist. She's incredible. You are an artist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I bet, I bet. I'm, I'm so sorry that I didn't finish it for the interview, but you're going to get this when we meet in person. So, Oh, oh my God. They, wow, tried, what do you mean you didn't get to finish it? It looks very finished to me. It's not finished here. This is this is where <laughs> oh, I'm okay, still but not that, finished. That, like, you had your hand there, so it looks perfect. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I, that is I, brilliant. And I, you cannot say with that kind of level of talent that you are an artist or something. That's <laughs> absolutely incredible. Wow. I look forward to seeing it in person. It's going to be better because it's very shiny here. I have like a roof window, so it's like... I, I don't know how to hold it to 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 make it. No, I can say it's oh, it's so good, <laughs> so good. Yay. Oh, yay! <laughs> and I, I I honestly can't wait to just you know meet with you and just just give you my art because that's my thing. When my favorite yeah. people come around, I just come around with my art and be like, "This is for you." <laughs> and that's, it. that's that's incredible. And I like. Do you know what I love about this community? That everybody is so freaking talented. Everybody mm -hmm. like makes stuff or draws stuff or does like the, yeah. some, something like crafty. And I love that. I so many amazing in. artworks and so, animations yeah. as well out there. I was yeah. like, Jesus, I know. So good. Yeah, people are just so passionate about the game and and the way that they express their passion and their love for it. It's just it's just in a way that I haven't experienced before. And I, I really, yeah, it's very sweet. To have it's very like that. cool the way that yeah. um, creativity breeds more creativity. Um, totally and i think that the the amount of like effort and passion and and just like pure work that you guys put into this is just being reflected back at you um mm. as it should yeah <laughs> yeah it truly is an amazing experience so once again if you guys haven't played Baldur's gate 3 what are you waiting for <laughs> like honestly it's worth all your time even if you haven't played dnd at all just go for it it's 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 a really good experience and uh, a very unique one mm -hmm. uh something that you won't find in every game so you know just go for it just click buy buy and, and play that's it deborah 
where can people find you on the big internet you can find me on twitter tiktok instagram um just search for deborah wild and it will come up there you go i will put yeah. it in the description as well so you know just you. click click follow do all that stuff because it's worth it uh thank you so much for coming yes. on our thank little podcast me. this was thank so much fun me. uh and uh you know wishing you all the very best for the future i i know thank it's gonna you. come in your way uh you're brilliant and uh we can't wait to meet you in october yes see you in october yeah, yeah. In, uh, well see you at the end of this month and, and, yeah god. oh my god we are <laughs> already in october that's yes. so <laughs> confusing <laughs> all right Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we're going to be back next week with another guest from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Uh, and we love you all. And don't forget, watch, watch movies. movies.